Alrighty, so let's make a cabochon today. And what I've got here is a piece of Norena Jasper from JV Rock Hounding. And as you can see, I've put epoxy in this piece because there was a bit of a fracture. And while it was mineralized and seemed to be healed, I still just wanted to be safe. And so I added some epoxy into it, hoping it would soak down into the little porous bits there and just help hold this piece together. Really, really don't want this one to come apart on the wheel. And if I get it a little wet here, you can see past that epoxy and see that pattern we're looking at. It is an awesome piece. This one is going right back to Jeff. I'm polishing it up for him. And what we're gonna try and do here is preserve this cross. And I'm thinking I can't quite center it and get enough to work with. If I do that, it's just a little too small here. So I'm gonna go, I think, to this size. Using those lines, we can almost center it. It goes right to the edges there. I think if we go, yeah, basically like that, we can center the cross, and get a really nice cab out of it for him. And we'll get over to the flat lap. It's been a little while since I've shared any polishing videos, I know. I've been doing a little bit of polishing without recording just to kind of relax and enjoy it, but I'm gonna share this one with y'all. So I made a few lines with the Sharpie there so that I can actually make my marks and my pattern on the front and the back here. All right, it's a little tricky to record that part and hold it in front of the camera. So, got my oval put on the back and the front. I think they're fairly aligned, but I'm mostly gonna use the back one while I'm cutting on my flat lap so I can look at the back one while I do my shaping. That way, as I start to dome it and remove this, I'll still have that for reference as I work around the edges. All right, let's jump to the wheel. I just finished shaping the piece and man, that thing made for some really dirty water. <laughs> but it looks very nice. I think that is gonna be perfect. I just checked with Jeff, called him on the phone. Now I'm gonna try and drill a hole right there so that he can wear this as a double-sided pen pendant. So uh, yeah. Let's see how the whole drilling goes. I'm a little worried. I'm gonna take it extremely slow. And if it takes me an hour to cut through that, that's fine. I am very worried about that crack in that stone being stable. Got a hole in there. I messed up a little bit. It's kind of a little off centered. I tried so hard to get it centered on there, but just slightly off centered. I might also redraw the oval on there because let's see if I realign it and get that centered. Might look a little bit better. I just gotta take a little more off the left side here to kind of even it out. But I was kind of hesitant to do that because it had a pretty cool pattern in here. Look at that. All right, oh. Back to the grinding wheel.
like it's taken a pretty good polish after the 1200. It's got some interesting metallic inclusions in some of the cracks. I think it's graphite or hematite, but it's kind of reflective running through the cracks there. I'm not sure what Narina is known for, but all right, only a little bit left to go. Two pads. All right, that is one lovely piece of Norina. Look at it here. Look at what it looked like originally. And look at that color difference from the polish. It just makes it pop. That piece is completely dry now. My fingerprints are getting left on it there, but gorgeous, gorgeous material. I really hope Jeff likes this piece. I hope I did a good enough job for him there. I think that's gonna make a really nice pendant. Can't wait to see him try it on. All right, that was it for this one. I was gonna try and make it a much shorter video because sometimes I tend to babble on and I can make something that was intended to be five or 10 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes. But that's it for this. See y'all next time. I don't know what we're, what we're gonna polish, but uh, got like 50 things on the table, so we'll see.